I'm sitting today in the New York offices of industry stalwart Walters Kluwer, along with its uh, CEO, Nancy McKinstry. Today, we're going to be talking about technological innovation by Walters Kluwer, and in particular, at the explosion in artificial intelligence. Nancy, let's dive straight in, and I promise that none of my questions have been generated by chat GPT. <laughs> in terms of um, AI in particular, yeah. what have been the developments or events that, that surprised you in a way? I think that one of the positives coming out of the release of chat GBT mm -hmm. is while large language models really have been around a couple of years and we were already experimenting with them, what it just became on everybody's mind, you know, no matter who you were in what field, you know, mm -hmm. people were just excited and talking yeah. about it. And so what's great about that is that it has spurred a tremendous amount of interest on the part of our customers to work mm -hmm. with us spurred a lot of creativity within um, within Walters Kluwer. Now, now, in some ways, the, the very hard work begins, right. though, about saying, okay, how can we deploy that either to get in-house efficiencies, because there's yep. a lot of things that we can use to make our work easier, and then how do we commercialize yeah. so it? So you need to prioritize, really. Absolutely. And, you know, we're doing some things. We're going to be... Um, uh, we have, have things already in an AI lab in our health group, again, up to mm -hmm. date, is one of the, the, the kind of flagship products of Walter's Chlor. It's used by almost 2 million healthcare professionals around the world, and it helps them diagnose and treat patients, right? right. And it relies on uh, not only expert uh, material, uh, but expert physicians as well that are, uh, that are helping to make sure that everything that we're uh, talking about is within the guidelines of how you should treat patients. So that's the product today. And what's been so great mm -hmm. with ChatGBT is it's now become more conversational. So, you know, if you had looked at it um, pre-ChatGPT or uh, Gen AI, what you would see is that pretty technical, as you'd mm -hmm. expect, right? It's mm -hmm. for doctors and healthcare professionals. And now with Gen AI, you can create a summary that's a bit more conversational. And this can very quickly give you a response in a way that you can understand. And then, very importantly, it will bring you right to the, the very specific scientific evidence that proves that that's the right treatment option for you. And so this notion of sort of quick conversational kinds of mm -hmm. answers mm -hmm. is what Gen AI is very good at, um, and yet it dovetails very nicely, which is, yeah. you know, to, to our core value proposition, which is we make sure things are accurate, we make sure things are current, and that you're going to get the very best advice if you yeah. use our products. Yeah. Wonderful. I feel we should touch on regulation. Sure. How should people think about balancing compliance with, uh, with regulation? One of the things we adopted many years ago now is responsible AI principles. Mm -hmm. So we adhere to all of that in terms of making sure things are accurate, free of bias, all of the elements of responsible AI. There's an audit trail of how do the algorithms actually work mm -hmm. and being able to make sure they can document and explain that. And just now, supplementary on that, is there broad interest geographically as well? Yes, and in fact, <laughs> some of the more gen AI solutions actually uh, are coming out of Europe right now. The underlying foundation you need is the data. So in our case, mm -hmm. it can be proprietary content or actually, you know, case information or medical information because you need that data in order for the machines to be smart. And so because our roots as a company mm. are in, you know, content and proprietary information, we have a lot of that at the ready to feed these. That's one of the reasons why we've been at this for 10 or 15 years is yeah. that we had the data that that others may not have had. If you can bring out your crystal ball, what do you think will be the, the pivot points or moments that will really show us we're reaching really widespread adoption? Yeah, I think that part of it will rely a lot on customer adoption. We are a B2B company, so our customers typically have budgets uh, yep. that they have to live within. Our customers also typically adopt to new technologies in a more incremental way than, say, a consumer mm -hmm. because they have to make sure it works. 
Yeah. And they have to make sure that they will get a return on the investment. To me, this will probably be a lot like cloud computing was, yeah. where you get, of course, early adopters, and then mm-hmm. it starts to, to mature. Now, today, 94% of our revenues are digital. And of that, about 50% of those revenues mm. already touch AI. Yeah. So AI is becoming sort of embedded in much of what we do, but Gen AI is really at the early stages. Fantastic. We could carry on, but we probably should bring it to a close. Nancy, thank you very much indeed for all your time today. You're clearly doing fantastic work. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.